Welcome to the forest of Satoyama. On the carpet of ephemeral spring flowers stand bizarre looking trees. Monstrous? Maybe. Certainly their shape doesn't look quite natural. Thin branches shoot out from their short, stocky stumps. Their huge hollows seem to invite you to another world. Animals come to this old kunugi, or sawtooth oak, for food. Children come to this gentle giant to collect their favorite insects every summer. They are after the king. Wild animals, large and small, gather around these bizarre trees by day and by night. People, too, come to take care of the forest. This is Satoyama. Satoyama is a traditional Japanese agricultural environment where people and nature live in harmony. When people came to live here thousands of years ago, they joined with nature to make a promise to share this world, a promise that has been kept to this day. People are given a share of nature's bounty, and in return, people took care of nature without causing harm. 68% of Japan is covered by forest. About half of these forests are natural, but the rest have been managed by man for centuries. Every autumn, some of the old trees are felled. Forest destruction? No, not really. This is only the beginning of regeneration. These bizarre shaped trees are living proof of nature's strength. They may look withered, but they come back to life again and again. in this forest of Satoyama. Early spring. Beneath the trees, new life begins to stir. The forest floor is sprinkled with welcome colors of wild flowers. In the northwest of Lake Biwa, not too far from the ancient capital of Kyoto, fields and rice paddies have been cultivated for thousands of years. Mixed woodlands near the villages are also of great importance for people. They enjoy and benefit from nature's rich bounty through four seasons of the year. The woodlands have long provided timber for firewood, charcoal, and something else. Farmers knock the ends of logs to wake up those sleeping inside. It's a herald of spring in Satoyama. It's the shiitake mushroom. It's the most popular mushroom used for a variety of Japanese cuisines, both at home and at top-class restaurants, thus providing good income for farmers. Thick, succulent ones are highly sought after. Each log is a mass of shiitake mushrooms, and the harvest is soon in full swing. They've been produced in a purely natural way using the cut logs from these woodlands.
Close by the mushroom logs, jays are visiting one of the bizarre looking trees. People affectionately call these bizarre looking trees Yama Oyaji or Fathers of the Mountains. There are many of these trees in the forest. Each one is clearly recognized by its distinct shape. Shapes that are all the result of human activity. This particular one is called the Elder. The Elder has an air of deep composure. It's been standing here for well over a hundred years and has seen how people abided by the promise. Its hollow is so big, it can easily hold a man. These hollows are valued by many forest creatures. For this toad, it's an ideal home. It's damp, cool, and best of all, it's safe. Every Yama Oyaji has a hollow or two, but some cannot be seen from outside. Honeybees are busily coming in and out, and a clue that this one certainly has a hollow within its trunk. Beyond the small opening, there's a large chamber. It's spacious enough to house a huge nest made of layers of combs. These combs are suspended from the roof. At this time of year, the bee colony is still small, but it already holds about 10,000 bees. Each cell contains an egg. Worker bees are busy on nursery duties. Underneath, the cells contain larvae of the new generation. Some of them are already emerging. Their devotion will be vital for the colony's well-being. Worker bees live for only one month. There is much to learn on these first flights. Takeoffs and landings require a lot of practice to get it right. Though their first flight may be wobbly, they will soon be bringing back nectar and pollen from fields and forests of Satoyama. It's May. Cool water from the mountains fills the terraced rice fields and farmers plant out the rice seedlings by hand. Elsewhere in Japan, most of the rice is planted by machine, but this farmer does it with special care, one by one. He is Esao Matsubara, 66 years old. He carefully separates seedlings and plants them in neat curves that follow the contours of the land. He produces rice and vegetables nearby his home and he also hunts and harvests in the forests and mountains. Every spring he hollows some logs to make a box. It's a box to persuade honeybees to build their nest inside. It's a kind of magic box to him. It exploits the bee's habit of nesting in tree hollows. To finish it, he rubs honey on the inside of the box. It may increase his chance of getting what he wants. Yes, sir. Uh...
Now he heads into the woods just behind the village. Matsubara knows these woods very well, and he has an ideal spot in mind for the box. He walks for about an hour until he arrives at the tree he has been looking for. It's a Japanese horse chestnut tree, or bakai, a giant said to be 500 years old. There's a reason why he's come all the way to this particular tree. In early summer, high up in the canopy, a buckeye tree produces a mass of large flowers. Each flower is a rich source of nectar. The flowers have a sweet scent to entice insects to come and pollinate. Many honeybees come for its nectar from all around Satoyama. Some even fly in from two kilometers away. With plenty of nectar available from the buckeye, honeybees can expect a productive summer. And so does Matsubara who hopes to see honeybees choose his box in which to build up their combs. A ruddy kingfisher. It's also called firebird in Japanese. It too is busy getting food for its offspring and it's a very skillful hunter. rarely misses its target. It dives over and over again. With its hungry chicks waiting at one of the hollows in the woods, he dives as many as ten times a day. Such an attentive and skillful parent ensures that the chicks are well fed with fresh fish. up on the branches, tits are after small caterpillars hiding between the leaves. They too commute to their nest in one of the hollows in an old oak tree. Here nine mouths are waiting to be filled. Having fed the chicks, the parents wait. They remove any droppings in the nest to keep it clean. Many animals use the shelter and protection of Yamaoyaji hollows to raise their young. But why do these trees all have large hollows and how do they remain standing with such huge cavities? The answer is provided by the people of Satoyama. It is a long process that begins in autumn. Every autumn, farmers fell some of the older oak trees. They cut logs for firewood or to be used in the cultivation of mushrooms. Mushroom logs must be a particular length, and the farmer uses a bamboo stick to mark the place where he must cut. An old oak tree is felled without leaving any branches or leaves. Only the bottom of the trunk is left.
these stumps may look lifeless, but changes will come. When spring arrives, the stump gives the first indication that it's still alive. Here it is. A tiny shoot sprouts straight out of the stump. It's called hikobai, which means grandchild sprout. Here's another one, and one more. New branches grow exceptionally fast. By midsummer, they can be two meters long. This old Yamaoyoji stump shared its life with its grandchildren. It continued to play an important role as a strong patriarch. Even this withered looking stump spreads its branches vigorously. A tree can be cut every 15 years, and sections of the forest are felled in turn. The forest floor is exposed to sunlight for the first time in 15 years, and soon the cleared area is alive with new growth. As well as growth, there's also decay. Fungi establish themselves on old stumps, infecting them through their damaged or cut surfaces. They break down the wood inside the tree without causing much damage to the outer layers. A tree frog finds itself safety in a small cavity. As the cycle of cutting and rejuvenation is repeated, trees develop impressive hollows. When all the branches are covered with fresh green leaves, people return to the forest. Farmers come to lay out cut logs for mushroom cultivation. Takaya is 70 years old. He and his wife have been producing shiitake mushrooms for 40 years. They now take the first step. They stack logs to prepare beds for mushrooms. All the logs have been inoculated with mushroom fungus beforehand. Almost all of them are the grandchildren of Yamaoyaji trees. The logs are neatly laid in traditional lattice formation. Number one enemy of shiitake is the strong summer sun. If the logs are exposed to the sun for too long, the mushrooms will die. The tree's leaves provide shade permitting just a small amount of dappled light to fall on the logs. The stacking technique that early shiitake growers developed is known as fuzekomi and is unique to Japan. First of all, farmers let the cut logs stand in the woods for two years. Then they can be taken from the pile. They will provide sustenance for mushrooms for several years.
neatly laid, all is ready for the mushrooms to grow. Early summer, an Asiatic black bear appears in the forest, attracted by something within the hollow of a large tree. It's after honey. Honey and bee larvae are a special treat for bears. Using exceptionally strong claws and jaws, it rips off the bark to enlarge an opening so that it can get to the combs. Yet the tree's trunk is not easy to break into. Sometimes a bear has to visit a tree over several days to enlarge the holes sufficiently to get what he wants. He'll come back another day to get his rewards. Someone else is after the honey. This is Matsubara, who set a trap box earlier in the spring. He's hoping that a swarm of honeybees will have colonized his box beside the huge buckeye tree. His box that he set under the tree has fallen down the slope. It seems honeybees did settle within the box, but the nest was raided, and he knows who the thief was. Very little of the comb remains, but after all, the forest is bare territory too. Back at Matsubara's home, there is some good news. He made another box and set it under the eaves of his house. It has successfully attracted a colony of honeybees. Matsubara will wait until autumn to harvest the honey. Their nest will have grown much larger by then. It's June. The rainy season is approaching. With so much rain this season, farmers can expect a good crop of rice in the autumn. The rain is also important for the logs stacked near the Yamaoyaji trees. Raindrops fall from the leaves and soak the logs below. Rainwater is essential to stimulate the growth of the shiitake fungus. White patches show that the fungus is now established. It's already spreading through the log, feeding on nutrients in the wood. Soon they will be covered with mushrooms. These logs are now spent. They were cut down five years ago and have produced many kilograms of mushrooms. 
they're taken to a dumping site at a corner of the forest. Here they will be left to decay so that their remaining nutrients are returned to the soil. Late at night, the dumping site attracts some other creatures. Wild boars. They come to the log piles for a midnight snack. It's not the remains of old mushrooms they're snuffling about. They know that something more nutritious is hidden beneath the piles. They are after protein-rich beetle larvae. These are not the larvae of just ordinary beetles. They are the most impressive of all insects that live in the Japanese forest. Japanese horned beetles. They grow fat on a diet of leaf mold. The dumping site of used logs is a perfect place for them. But only those that buried themselves deeply will escape the hungry boars. Several days later, some larvae have turned into pupae. Already, the features of the adult horned beetle can be clearly seen. One day soon, this horn will become its weapon to get food and females. The king of the forest now quietly waits for glorious summer days to come. Summer continues to be hot. Children cool off in the stream that runs through the forest. The cool water from the mountains is sheer bliss for everyone. A small stream runs in front of the Matsubara home. The entire family is back from the city for the annual summer festival. They all brought small children and their laughter echoes through the village. Summer is a season of adventure in Satoyama. With insect nets in hands, boys are on their serious mission to hunt for the king of the forest. They quietly stalk their target. And he's got the king. Meeting these spectacular insects face to face starts a lifetime fascination with nature for many children. For male beetles, it's the beginning of a summer of jousting and fighting for territory. Out in the forest, an unusual sweet aroma fills the air. This is where it comes from, sap oozing from the stumps of oaks. Nutrients produced by trees during the day are now bubbling out from the damaged bark. Its brandy-like sweet smell lures forest dwellers to these trees. This toad is heading for the sap tree too, but he's not interested in sap.
toads are attracted by the various insects which gather around the sap tree. This tiny sap beetle is a toad's favourite. Sap beetles are here to feed on sweet sap, but they risk their lives at the same time. For toads, it's an all-you-can-eat restaurant. Here at the sap tree, too, the king rules. He is here not only to feed, but also to find a potential mate. The smaller one without a horn is the female. The male's impressive horns remind people of the ancient samurai helmet or kabuto. Japanese call them kabuto mushi with admiration. They're likely to end up in a fight. They use their horns to push their rivals. Each will try to upend its opponent. What a throw! The loser has no option but to leave and try another night. The strongest males will defend the best sap trees against all comers. The tactic is to go in low and wedge your tusk under the belly of your opponent. It takes strength and technique to be a winner. It's no surprise that in Japan, these beetles are symbols of strength and tenacity. They are the incarnation of the heroic samurai spirit. The village cemetery lies at the edge of the forest. The Japanese believe that the forest is a place where spirits of the dead return. During the summer festival, Families invite the spirits of their ancestors to come back. Villagers put lanterns to guide the returning spirits back home. The spirits will be sure to find their way, even through the darkness. On the final evening of the Bon Festival, families come to the river to bid farewell to the spirits. They make six cairns. Each symbolizes a Jiso Bodhisattva. Each stands guard as a savior to the six realms through which spirits must pass during the course of reincarnation. The Matsubara family has brought an offering of food which they place beside their cairns. As the elder, Matsubara makes sure offerings are pleasing to his ancestors. Then he burns incense to purify the returning spirits. the whole family joins in the ceremony. It was their ancestors who cared for the forest through many generations. While the six Jizos watch over the ceremony, spirits of the dead travel along the river to where they belong. Summer is passing. The rice paddies are now a sea of gold. Any day now, the farmers will start harvesting the crop. The buckeye trees 
that were once covered in nectar-filled flowers now bear large horse chestnuts. They are ripe, their shells dry and hard. The autumn fall of nuts is the gift that all forest animals have been waiting for. And so have some people from the village. One lady has been making this journey every autumn for 60 years. She never misses the horse chestnut harvest. Every year, Chiyo Nishizawa makes a sweet cake made of horse chestnuts. First, she soaks them in spring water for several days to remove any bitterness. She's lived all of her 81 years in this Satoyama. The nuts are abundant this year. There's more than enough for all. A tiny mouse comes for a share. Then a deer, too. People and animals share the bounty of the forest evenly at all times of the year. Soon after the horse chestnuts harvest, the acorns of the sawtooth oak ripen. Many forest residents rely on the bounty from oak trees to help them survive the winter. Squirrels eat many acorns straight away, but they also store some of them. Honeybees are stocking up for winter too. The nest in the oak tree has grown much larger than it was in spring. Autumn flowers are offered a final burst of nectar, which they use to top up the honeycombs. Now all the cells are filled with plenty of honey. However, at the same time of the year, the bees' predators are also at their most numerous and aggressive. This is a venomous Japanese wasp. They take honey too, but the prime food for their larvae is a meatball made of honeybees. A wasp has flown in to try and grab a bee. Honeybees gather in defense. They vibrate their wings to threaten the intruder. But the wasp is undeterred. One honeybee has been captured. The wasp turns it into a ball and takes it back to its hungry larvae. Here comes another attacker. However, these Japanese honeybees have a unique way to counterattack. At first, a brave few attack the wasp. As they swarm over the wasp, they vibrate their wing muscles to generate heat, which rises up to about 48 to 50 degrees centigrade. Bees know that wasps will die if the temperature rises beyond 46 degrees centigrade, whereas they can tolerate up to 50. The honeybees work together to defend the nest.
At the home of Matsubara, the bees are still using his box. It's time for him to harvest the honey. The box is tightly packed with honeycomb. He carefully removes the wax cap that seals the cells and releases the flow of rich golden honey. It's time for him to take a taste. He places honeycomb on a bamboo sieve to filter out the honey. Na, kore ga ma ipi ipi no hachi ga na. Issoku mi yappa si hakonde koyu suwarashi ano mitsu Honey is indeed the sweetest gift from Satoyama. Matsubana never forgets to leave the bees enough honey to enable them to survive over the winter. Once again, it's time to cut down some of the trees. Each year, another part of the forest is cleared. Farmers need freshly cut logs filled with nutrients to produce a reliable crop of mushrooms. For 40 years, Takaya has lived close to these Yamaoyaji oaks. And these fathers of the forest continue to give him his livelihood. He thinks about the life of each tree as he prepares to cut it down. For centuries, people have felled trees in Satoyama for the benefit of both mankind and nature. Here is the elder. It's time for the oldest tree in the forest to be cut. For the elder, who lived for a long period of time, it has been only 15 years since its limbs were last cut. However, will this venerable old tree have the energy to sprout new shoots next spring? Will it survive the winter like this?
the elder stands quietly and accepts its fate. It is simply keeping the promise with men. Late autumn, just before winter, nature shows off its beauty in red and yellow. Surviving the coming winter's hardships is not only a challenge for the elder, it will soon test all forest dwellers. Winter is the quietest season in Satoyama. The elder and the other oaks seem as cold as stone. But what of those who find shelter deep within the trees? How do they survive? Honeybees huddle together on the life-sustaining honeycombs. Hairs on their bodies help keep them warm. Their main source of heat is what they generate by vibration. Here, within the hollow of Yamaoyaji oaks, they will survive until the seasons turn once more. Spring has returned to the forest. The snows have cleared, but the leaves have not yet returned. Yet a familiar sound echoes through the forest. It's the mushroom growers. Shiitake mushrooms grew very slowly inside the logs through the long winter and they're ready to sprout as mushrooms as the temperature rises. The takayas are having a bumper crop this year. People have taken great care of the forest for long periods of time. Now, it's time for the forest to give something back to them. They give and they take. The ancient promise is solemnly undertaken. Some logs are taken on a short journey out of the forest. The children of old oaks meet the children of the village. A sequel of the tree's journey has just started. And time is passing. Change is happening fast now. Suddenly, the forest is green. What has happened to the elder? Once again, the miracle of new life has occurred. It's tender, 
but strong. The circle of life will continue to tie the forest and the people together, as it has for centuries, now and on into the future. This is Satoyama. Clouds blanket all those that live in the valley. His life is in closely entwined with the natural world of Satoyama. Well, of course, I'm in love with Satoyama uh, because I know Satoyama 1 and I know Satoyama 2 and I'm delighted there should be Satoyama 3 uh, because it shows me yet another side of this uh, remarkably beautiful Japanese landscape. A sophisticated uh, culture to know what you must do and when you must do it and, and how to prevent you from from destroying the relationship. So it's, it has a, a powerful message, an important message for humanity. <laughs>